What's up, Leo gang? Welcome to my channel, Tarot by the Intuitive Teacup. My name is Annie. We're going to read your tarot cards here today. General messages for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. Please come into the reading with an open heart, an open mind, a desire to learn something and better yourself. Of course, if the messages that come through in the reading don't resonate with you, uh, don't take action on them. <laughs> Push them aside. Assume they're going out to someone else who needs to hear them. Uh, but do be open to the idea that they may make more sense to you in the future. Frequently, that is how tarot works. So you are accountable and responsible for all your own actions and decisions. This is just optional advice, guidance, and energy check-in for my Leos, my beautiful Leo squad. We're going to do it here. <clears throat> So this is uh, near, or I should say, recent past, present, and what you're building towards. And then to the left, what they need to release, what they need to release or move away from, and what you need to embrace. Ooh, you're Ten of Cups. Well, that shouldn't be too hard, right? Easier said than done, though, maybe. Let's see. Bottom of your deck is the Two of Wands. So any two in tarot talks about deliberation, decision-making. It's an Aries card, so you might sort of be torn between a rock and a hard place on which way to go, um, which person to choose, which opportunity to choose. Um, and, and be open-minded about the choice, too. Sometimes it's not necessarily this black or white, A or B, one or two, this or the other. Sometimes it's merging. Sometimes it's... Um, What's a good way? Refining it so that you can incorporate both. But usually when, when it comes up, it says something kind of has to change in order to make the two work. Or again, sometimes it is about release. So let's uh, let's get in a little bit more and see how that resonates. <clears throat> so the first message I get from this is receiving lots of communications. Uh ideas um it could even be sort of like directions from a boss or a person how to do something it could be acquiring knowledge or skills or ideas lessons um incorporating them into your body of knowledge or your being and putting them back out into the world and then receiving good communications back um i almost see it as like i'm getting the idea of magnets and i don't know why but it's like what what you put out, you attract, but it, it has to start with you seeking out what you want. Um, hopefully that's not too convoluted and you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, Eight of Wands is typically messages being sent out. But for some reason, I was reading this in your recent past as you acquiring quite a bit of messages. Um, or it could be thinking about your options and if you're going to respond to them. For example, you know, doing a job hunt, a job search and being like, okay, well, I have these ones that look interesting. Which ones am I actually going to, you know, submit resumes for or something like that. Then with Page of Swords, it's a, a younger, fresh, more youthful, innocent energy. Um, so new-ish, I always say. Usually aces are brand new, never seen, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, the page is something maybe you've been working on a little bit or you're familiarizing yourself with, but she has her sword straight up in the air. So to me, that's very much, um, I just heard putting your money where your mouth is. That's funny. Rather than planning it, actually taking, taking the action and doing it, but, but putting that word, that, that information out into the world and seeing what you get back. You seem to get back a lot. Uh, almost the idea of what you get back feels like such a sense of pride and accomplishment. It feels uh, metaphorically like a trophy you can put on your wall. Um, for some of you, this almost feels like launching a business. You know, organizing it, doing all the action behind the scenes, maybe to get it ready. You know, push and go, launching the website, whatever, putting the flyers out, you know, marketing yourself. And then, you know, if you build it, they will come. That's almost what I get. You you get really positive, warm feedback from something um, and, and huge opportunities for growth. What's interesting, though, in the near future, you have a card of assessment. But I want to be clear, this is not like your, your classic, like, oh, my gosh, now I'm in a pinch or I'm in a rut or I'm overwhelmed. Now, what do I do? This is like damn, that like succeeded my expectations. But now because of the results or what I've, what I've earned, what I've garnered from this, now I have more decisions to make. So it's almost like progress came sooner or it was more abundant or it doesn't even have to be money because I'm not even seeing pentacles, but it's, it's requiring more exert, more energy, more more steam, you know, you have to be able to keep keep up and maintain this. That's a very great word for, for my Leos, the maintenance of it, the maintaining of, of the fire of the sun, right? So it's interesting under the two of wands is, but do you have 
It's, I almost see this page of cups as like feeling artistically or creatively blocked or going through sort of like a slump of not having the same inspiration when you started because there might be a change in dynamic here. Um, I'm almost getting like emotionally or, or really it's artistically constipated is, is sort of what I'm getting. And yeah, I know that's a silly term, right? But it's like you go to the canvas and, and you have all your tools, you have your fresh paint, you wash your brushes and you're like, ah, but there's just nothing there. Which is so interesting because that's not at all what I see happening in this storyline. <clears throat> so maybe this has to do with the idea of I really succeeded in one area, one territory, one branch, you know, one, one idea. And I have another, but what if I go the other direction and it's not as fortunate, it's not as enjoyable, it's not as pleasurable or lucrative. Um, I do see you expanding your territory and for some reason it's very much being displayed in wands and uh, uh, a fames, which is swords in this deck. So taking a small idea and going places with it, I think patience is important, but it, it's almost like trust your intuition. I, I think you're sitting on a lot of really great ideas or not even just sitting on them. I, I think you are utilizing them and incorporating them, but I think you're meant to expand in ways that you didn't necessarily envision. Um, so let's go into this. What you need to release is the Queen of Wands. Very interesting. So my gut reaction, without even really thinking, you know, with my mind, more thinking with my intuition, is the release of ego, the release of, well, I don't do anything unless it's guaranteed to succeed. Or if I put myself out there, you know, it absolutely cannot and will not fail because what would that say about me as a person? I think you need to ease up and lean into the pleasure and the enjoyment of it, but not... It's almost like maybe not holding yourself to such high standards because anything that's showing up in page form, and it is, again, this idea of two, the incorporation or the merging, the separation, whatever it is, it's showing up in its infancy and in a very sort of like naive, um, pliable, that's a really good word for this, form. Nothing here is really set in stone, but you, you do have to ha be sort of like the adventure seeker and go after it and, and really be confident in, in promoting your skills and talents and abilities but there's something about it, again, the two, the cups and, and, and the swords, and, and with the knight of uh, swords here, it's Gemini energy, so it's versatile. It isn't just the one. It's both. It's many. It's several. It's, it's stimulated all around, right? So I would actually say, think long term about this. Yeah, and you have the sun. Leo, you have a fantastic reading. I'm just saying it. Think long terms. I think overnight success stories um, are wonderful, but sometimes they burn out quick, right? It's like an overnight success story that has a very short-lived, you know, uh, peak or however you want to say it. I think that's why you're being asked to move away from the Queen of Wands. It might be the speed, the lightning reaction, the... Um, uh, lightning in a bottle that maybe you did experience the first time around. And I'm not saying all of you, but there's definitely something here where I think the idea had been marinating for a long time. And when you finally chose to take action, like that energy was so excited to escape and go out into the world because it, it is sort of a reflection of internally what's going on inside of you that it yielded this wonderful success. You know, I was talking about like the, the magnet. You, what we, you put out into the world was a piece of you and people liked it and they brought, you know, they brought themselves to you, right? There was something about endorsement or support from other people and you're like, wow, like I'm doing pretty good. Don't get too caught up in the ego, but do celebrate confidently um, your, your wonderful abilities. I would say if you choose to veer off in another direction or to incorporate more, to grow, to get bigger, to be versatile, to add this, to, you know what I mean, to mix the ingredients up a little bit, I would encourage you to not go off of comparison to what happened the first time. And I don't say that to dissuade you from it. It's quite the opposite. It's that you may try something new or, again, incorporating this into something bigger, but, but it has a more Queen of Pentacles energy and you're like, 
oh, like it's, it's not growing, it's kind of slow, like I'm not attracting the same clientele, that might actually work out to your benefit. Because again, this theme of two, this collaboration, this partnership. Um, and I mean, the Queen of Pentacles, though, like let's not downplay it. Yes, it's slow. The opportunity the Queen of Pentacles takes advantage of, it shows up as a seed, but she can envision the oak tree. Do you know what I mean? The acorn to the oak tree. Um, so that's important to keep in mind. And that narrative specifically has to do with veering off in, in another direction. That's your two of wands. And again, for it's not this all or nothing. I'm going to abandon this and go that. For some of you, it might be. But for others of you, it's, wow, this is going full steam ahead. I have to maintain it and keep up with it, but also keep it fresh and interesting. What can I add? This could be bringing someone on board to the team and then being like, ooh, well, do, do I have resources to allocate for that? To me, this says the resources will come. Um, but you, I think an important... Uh, Elements of this is, again, maintaining. There, there's something about the fixity here. Um, if, like, we have to keep stoking the fire. You know, very, very, uh, I almost called you Aries. Very good Leo word. <clears throat> this is such a great card for, like, is, uh, expressing your feelings, expressing your emotions, your, your self-expression, your poetic, sensitive side, um, but also your creativity, because I know some of you are like, you know, squirming as I say that. You're just like, ugh, feelings, no. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just kidding, Leo. Um, others of you, this is about marketing yourself, being a good uh, um, advocate uh, or champion of, of, you know, your talents, your business, your I mean, I guess this could be a love reading. It's funny, a lot of the readings this week have, I haven't really put a, uh, a manifestation or desire on, on what I was hoping to read for, like, oh, love or money. A lot of them seem to be very career-based this week. Um, and that may or may not have to do with the, um, the lunar eclipse, right? We have the uh, south node and then the moon in Scorpio opposing the sun in Taurus. So Taurus, you know, does have a lot to do with earthly pleasures, but also money, building, you know, er earthly matters. Um, and because it's conjunct the North Node, it, it's sort of like a point of destiny, something we're uh, aspiring to go towards. So depending on where Taurus falls in your chart, you know, that, that may or may not mean something to you. Um, if you're a Leo rising, though, that would make total sense to me because I believe Taurus uh, using equal house would rule your your 10th house, which has to do with your public standing, your reputation, um, and your your life out in the world versus, you know, your private life hidden away, your, you know, in your house, your home. Um, this, this feels very like putting yourself out there to be seen. Um, and yeah, maybe moving away from sort of the fear of critics, of, of other people's approval. And um, yeah, I, I think people are coming to celebrate you and endorse you and they, they like what you're doing. So I, I would say embrace the speed and the divine timing. Or actually, I don't want to use the word speed because I think it's the opposite. I think it's slower moving. There's such a good expression and it's it's like on the tip of my tongue. It's like lightning in a bottle and then when you try and recapture it, it's just not the same. It doesn't mean it's not bad. It just doesn't have the same destined point or the same uh, timeline. That's a really good way of putting it. The timeline of these two projects or things that, that are coming together, it's like they're interwoven somehow. Um, it's not going to move in the same timeline, so just expect that. You know, the Queen of Wands here, she's, she's sitting, right? She's in it for the long haul because she knows she's supported by the Queen of Pentacles. She will make the acorns into that oak tree, but yeah, it's not going to be an overnight success. But look, she's doing it because it, there's happiness in it. It brings her joy. It, it honors her creative spirit, her self-expression, her, her authenticity. She, she puts her a little piece of herself into her work to share it with the world. That's such a beautiful message, Leo. I love it. I love it. So, all right, so we know we're moving away from putting ourselves under tight pressures and deadlines. Um, we're moving away from comparison. We're moving away from insecurities or things that knock our self-confident. We are having total and, other, uh, uh, total and utter faith in our ideas and in ourselves. What we need to embrace is the community. You have people around you, whether it's friends or lovers or clients or partners, who embrace you and nourish you and support you. So make sure you're embracing that. And, and not only that, but expressing gratitude. And to the universe, too, symbolically, this could be like the universe wrapping you up in a big old hug, right? Because it feels like that. It feels like whatever you went in on, especially business-wise, it's like, I don't know, it just feels like angel wings were wrapped around you. There was like divine protection in this little seed you were nurturing. And you seem to be thrilled by the results of it. 
I just I see this as like your your trophy, your accomplishments, your plaques, your awards. Um, <clears throat> but I, I do want to encourage you to make sure it comes from a place of honoring your <clears throat> coming from a place of self-love and self-respect not needing the applause even though i get it leo's the applause helps right that that's a part of sort of the leo thing you know the sun maintains the planets because the planets in a sense need them um so again that's where it's like that slippery slope between um welcoming the applause right because that in a sense fuels you to, to go harder and then do more of it but not relying on it in order to get you out of bed in the morning anyway i i digress there's a need to show gratitude and appreciation for family whatever that means to you and that guys i want to be clear that might not be by blood you know what you consider family doesn't have to be your bloodline for some of you it absolutely is um others of you it's your friends who stood by you your co-workers your uh your spirit guide again your angels whatever you believe in Ten of Cups is like the Cinderella story. I think, too, there's like this momentum. You're riding this wave of, oh, my God, like this, this just blew my mind and I can't believe I did this. And like you're hungry for more. That's great. You're motivated. But I also think the universe is reminding you to be grateful for what is before you right now. Um, because, you know, what you have in your lap right now, you were just manifesting a few months ago or a few weeks ago, a few years ago, whatever it was. And now it's come to you. Other people are in the same place you were years ago where they look at what you have and they're like, wow, Leo's got it all. So I think there is something about being grateful for just the living in the moment, the here and now, looking around you and seeing joy and abundance and love. And not saying everything is perfect. That's not what the Ten of Cups is about. But it's that feeling that, that you, you've manifested and walked into sort of this this chapter where there's there's gratitude and there's love all around you so the universe is saying embrace that don't miss it right um and i'm just getting the idea of like don't turn your back on the ocean because it can change in, in a moment right um and then you have the nine of wands okay this this makes sense to me then so i believe this is saturn in sagittarius you have to think about this nine of wands I believe it's, or is that Ten of Wands? Son of a, I wish I remembered. Oh no, Nine of Wands. Duh, is Moon in Sagittarius. Yeah, so your desire to grow. Your your Moon is your inner nature, your yearnings, your instincts, um, where you feel comfortable, where you feel safe. When the Moon is in um, Sagittarius, right? Sagittarius' natural instinct is to expand. It's Jupiter, right? So it's a Jupiter-influenced Moon. Um, to grow, to expand, to learn, to study, to find its people, to find communities, um, to quite literally just experience things, people, everything, right? Um, with that, though, again, I, I'm going to reiterate what I've already said because it's the same message. Your desire to grow is fantastic. Don't let anybody talk you out of that. However, don't let that take you away from this beautiful blessing that's right in front of you where you're not feeding that and acknowledging just how great that is on its own it's almost like getting maybe money hungry maybe that's a good way of putting it um not not always appreciating what you have because once you have like that taste of success or that taste of glory you're like ah oh, well you know it's only up from here but but what about here what about now what about living in the moment um you know i said this to all my fire signs taking a moment to really stop and smell the roses to see the forest from the trees, to, to, to ground yourself, um, which I think is important because not a lot of earth here, right? Um, and that's, I think, partly why your Queen of Pentacles is showing up too. Um, the success doesn't stop here. By no means am I saying that. Um, but yeah, it's like leaping from one tall building onto another when I think the universe is saying, but what about the view from here? Like, can we just stop and appreciate that for now? Um, this card also looks very, like, <sighs> suspicious, but not in the classic sense of, of how that may be interpreted. I think there is not desire. I mean, it's, yes, temptation. That's the word I'm looking for. It's like, that's all. I'm almost reading this more as, like, devil energy. Like, you have a really, really good thing going, and you may be presented with the opportunity to, again, like, you know, move upstream, 
but at what cost? And I'm not saying that as a threat or to incite fear. You know, don't don't misunderstand that. That's not at all what I'm saying. You certainly can. And a lot of you probably will. But do know that there may be some sort of sacrifice that comes with it. So I just don't want you to look back and have the sense of, oh, man, I really should have appreciated what I had then because it was it was there was something kind of simple and, and nice and sweet about it. Um, and to be honest, I sense that a lot of my Leos already know this. There's the temptation to do something very reactive. That's another good moon word. And moon and Sagittarius kind of reactive to go for joy, to go for big, to go for broke. You know, the gamblers of the Zodiac, if you will. But at the same time, is it worth it? And I don't even know if I necessarily want to phrase it this way, but sort of like the what if it doesn't go the way you planned? Are you okay with that? Do you still have a plan B? Do you still have an option uh, to get yourself out of a tricky situation? That's where I almost think this comes in too. It's like you want to keep feeding that nest egg. By all means, take risks, go in different directions, but there's something you're building long-term, so don't get too um, caught up in, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's like by the fly-by-night operation or by the flash success or flash in the pan. Is that the term? All, all these old-timey expressions. I hope you guys know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, this reading looks fantastic. Um, actually, we'll do one of these. If Leah's looking for love, um, in terms of, I see fire signs here, particularly Aries, maybe some Sagittarius, double down Sagittarius, possibly, yeah, fire signs are coming through the strongest this week. I also see Gemini and maybe Pisces. Um, so real quick, I don't think this was a love reading, but you know what, if you want to read it as one, by all means, this is your reading. So interpret as you will. Again, just use it for your best and highest good. That would be my advice. Any, any messages for love with Leo? Looking for love. Three of Pentacles. Building slowly over time. Again, it, it's not overnight success. You're going to have to put in effort. Um, but that doesn't mean it won't be pleasurable and fun. It just it doesn't mean you're going to fall in love overnight. And to be honest, guys, I think that's healthy. You know, I, I think what we see in rom-coms is great and fun and escapism, but it's not real. So don't get too caught up in, again, the Cinderella overnight success story. That is, that's rarely the case for most people, and that's not a bad thing. Um, yeah. It, Putting in the effort in, ensures long-term success. I see a Scorpio who is smitten with you. <laughs> a Scorpio that wants to grow and develop and unfold and divulge their secrets with you. Uh-oh, you're cracking the code to the Scorpio. But they're letting you, though. All right, so then you have some water here, too. So the Ten of Cups, yeah, it's funny. I mentioned Pisces and then the other two water signs. Uh, water signs. Water signs showed up, so I almost see that as them being like, well, don't forget us. Like, we're water signs, too. They, We could be part of your Ten of Cups. Um, and again, keep in mind, that these are relationships, right? So maybe this has to do with business partnership. Maybe some of you are getting involved uh, in a, a transformational um, stage in life, right, with a cancer or a transformational business endeavor with a Scorpio or an Aries or whoever. Um, Three of Pentacles says build. Uh, and it does have to do with teamwork and collaboration. So it could be that you started off something on your own and maybe you're very hesitant to get other people involved. Again, make sure it's not coming from the superficiality of, well, well I need the credit. I, you know, I need to be the leader and the, you know, have all the success. You know, I, I get it, Leo. I get it. Like there's something very leadership oriented about Leo and, and, being at the center stage. I'm, I'm not trying to take that away from you at all. But again, part of that is sharing your gifts with the world and sometimes bringing on board and being their mentor. It is a wonderful way to kind of continue the legacy of this, which is such an important word when it comes to pentacles. Um, yeah, I see Scorpio and Cancer. Um, what else can I tell you about this in terms of love? Sorry, we're talking about love. Um, things are unfolding as they should. Take a breather. If you are stressed about, again, timelines and worrying about love, you're probably not ready for it. Um, if you are living in the moment and enjoying things as they come, things are just going to naturally unfold to you. So take a breath. Enjoy your life and you will attract people who are on the same wavelength and time length uh, or energetic timeline, however you want to say it. Um, people who are in alignment with you, they're, they're going to be manifested. And again, the idea of like magnetized, it's something like they're going to be pulled in by your orbit. So they're coming. They may be coming in pairs, I will say too, coming in two. So you may have decisions to make about romantic prospects as well. Um, I'm going to wrap you up with an Oracle card.
something about disability is coming through. Um, I don't know if it's like a speech impediment or I don't know. It could be something auditory. There, there's something about like a, a disability coming through in, in your dating life. And I'm not really sure what that means, but and I don't even really know why we would need to get into that. I think it's just confirmation for some of you that that is that holds importance. Um, that feels very I, I'm reading a lot about the. Uh, Chiron right now, which is like the wounded warrior. So this person may have a, a very strong Chiron in their chart, like uh, influencing their sun or their moon or something. Again, if that is Greek to you, don't worry about it. But maybe maybe it's something I'm supposed to tell you. So you go research it. You know what, what Chiron is? C-H-I-R-O-N. <clears throat> it's a planetoid or it's not a meteor. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Shark. Right next to the Scorpio. I love it. Shark. Sharknado. All right, let me look this up. Give me a second. I got to find it first. Fish, stingray, crocodile, dolphin, whale. Oh, I missed it. There it is. All right, here's what this spirit animal guidebook says. Kim Kranz. The shark indicates directness, exposure, revealing true nature and desire. The shark is only dangerous when we don't acknowledge it. This card indicates that something big needs to be exposed. It's lurking in the depths and creating tension. Shark energy takes over us when we are hesitant to be honest, to totally be ourselves, or to say what we really want. It may be tempting to continue pretending that nothing is wrong, but when the shark energy is at play, we feel its presence circling us. When in balance, this card can mean intriguing, captivating, and mysterious. When out of balance, it can be sneaky and destructive. So scorpionic energy, right? Life, life and death, birth and, and regeneration, that kind of thing. Uh, with this card, it says bringing into balance, honesty would serve you well. All right, Leo gang, this was a kick-ass reading. I think it was one of my best readings so far. I hope you think so too. Let me know in the comments below. Um, remember to like the video, guys. That really does help my channel. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Book a personal reading. That's a fantastic way to support my business. Um, and just tell your friends. Word of mouth will help me grow too. So whatever you can do, it's good karma. It's good energy. Um, but I just appreciate you being here. So I'll see you next time. Bye, Leo.